Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us today. I've just seen that Mary's one says, waiting to reconnect. So we'll see what happens there. Oh, there we are. You're back again. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, for a minute, that scared me. But... I think I heard Leslie's heart stop. <laughs> Um, today we're talking to the fantastic and one of my favourite local artists, Mary Clark, all about her work in her beautiful studio that we can see there. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think we're going to first of all, as always, have a quick look at, at the page in the magazine, which again, you can click the button just down here or have a look at our website and Leslie will just pop that up on screen for us now. How did you hear about um, Art360, Mary? Was it through Leslie? Oh, yeah, through Leslie and I've been a member of Pure for a long, long time. Yeah just sort of a, a bit on the outskirts but um yeah I, I kind of had a bit of sort of mentoring during, during my pottery lessons that i was running when leslie was learning <laughs> so a bit of a cheat really That's but brilliant. i've always been a big supporter of uh, of uh, something like pure something that provides that help to artists mm -hmm. particularly someone like me that hasn't gone through all right there's my page Fantastic. So that's all there for you all to look at along with Mary's contact details. Your website, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know what that yeah. one is. <laughs> <laughs> and, I did, I did all them all. You. <laughs> and you were just saying, um, particularly someone like you who doesn't, was that follow the usual path, were you going to say? Yes. Yeah, and that's, quite, that's a kind of a really big thing for me. But mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I've had an office background. I haven't had a, an artist background. And I think it's just really important just to sort of um, emphasize that actually there's, there's space for everybody here. And... Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's around practice and time and dedication, I guess, because I've been doing this for a long time just as a hobby. But in the last sort of four years, I've, I'm have i now doing it as a sort of business and I just love it. And every day I learn something new. And, you know, I haven't got any qualifications. I've never studied ceramics. I've done a bit of um, evening classes when I was in my late 20s, early 30s. Mm. And everything else, it's just been practice and practice and practice. And uh, I've kind of, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I'm certainly getting better, I think, in the... Yeah, and I'm really happy with what I'm doing at the moment. Mm. So what was your, um, if you can remember, what was your earliest memory surrounding art? Was there a moment when you just thought, I'm drawn to this naturally? No, I think, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm really honest, I don't think I am drawn to art. I think I'm drawn to making things. Right. When I was a kid, and I hope my sister listens to this at some point because she'll remember this. When I was a kid, I used to get cardboard boxes and I used to, like decorate them with wallpaper and with um, and I used to like little matchbox furniture and I had this little like hedgehog thing that I used to put in and it lived in this house and eventually this house had sort of like about 10 rooms you know it was the best kept hedgehog in the whole world it wasn't a real one I hated to her but you know I used to make furniture and I was just I used to just like making things and I think that's where I'm at now I don't mind if I'm making things like little Nanita here who you're covering actually Molly I'm gonna she is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm making things like the sculptural pieces of art, if I'm throwing on the wheel or or making, you know, I'm, I'm making sort of like the smaller pieces that I make and I sell. It's just, I just love doing it. And I think that's what drives me and drives me to do it better and to do it better quality, really. Oh, fantastic. So, so tell us a bit about your artist story then. So when you, when you first started doing your pottery. When I first started, I think uh, I was, I moved to London, I was living in London, and I did a few evening classes in Norbury and one in Clapham. And it was just with a group of friends um, that I'd gone to college with, and we just thought we'd do it for a bit of fun. They all gradually dipped out, and I carried on, and I did stop, actually. And uh, about uh, 22 years ago, we moved down here to Burwash, um, which is back down where I was from. I'm from Battle. So if any of you who are listening were watching yesterday and watching Gemma, I was watching it, I think, and I know her. We went to school, we went to sixth form college together, really bizarrely. It's a <laughs> small world. So I was born and brought up in Battle, so we moved back down here. And when I got back down here, I couldn't find anywhere that I could do evening classes because I was still commuting up to London um, to, to work. And uh, so I started just making stuff in my own time, partly in the kitchen, partly in the garden shed, partly in the greenhouse where I could find a space. Um, and I did that for a long time and I didn't really progress. And it was all just a bit frustrating, really. Um, and then gradually we got, um, yeah, sort of morphed the shed into a studio and, and really probably four, yeah, four years ago. I mean, I've, I've been selling stuff for probably about seven or eight years now, but mm -hmm. really four years ago, I started to take it really seriously. I gave up work. It was a big decision. And um, yeah, kind of here I am loving every second, really. And I decided to teach. 
And tell us a bit about your classes. So how do people um, get involved with those and hear more about them? At the moment, they can't because I'm, I've closed that side of the business down because of the uh, COVID. But right. um, if anybody's interested to in get on my mailing list, then I can um, just email me or text me. And I, I'm just keeping a list, which um, I'll, you know, I'll contact everybody when I do come to open again. I don't know when that's going to be. Um, looking at the news this morning, I really don't think this, it's going to be this side of Christmas and probably in the spring, if I'm being real, you know, really realistic to it. But, but to be honest, I'm, just, I'm using the time to develop my skills. So when I do come back, I'll be better. And I'll have more skills and more more knowledge to share. Fantastic. And, and speaking of that, I think everyone would be desperate for you to just tell us a bit about a few pieces that are behind you. And of course, the monkey. Oh, We've got to hear about her. Yeah, I'll just bend you forward slightly. There she is. That's little Nanita. Oh. Actually, I wanted to do some more sort of wild animal pieces for a long time because I'm doing the lessons. Then it takes up quite a lot of my time and so I, I and when I am making stuff it tends to be commissions all of this stuff all the dogs you can see here are all commissions and so that's kind of that's mainly what I do so it's been lovely in lockdown actually having some time to make some stuff for me and little Nanita came was part of that and she Nanita means little girl in Spanish and then a friend of mine Karen named her the other day so uh, that name stuck so yeah so behind us I've got this dog's just about to go in the kiln she's a commission she's a uh, cockapoo I'll bring her oh. She looks slightly matte colour at the moment, but when she comes out of the kiln, she'll be she'll have a sort of like a slight satiny shine to her, like this one. But so this is this is her. She's beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, I'm really pleased with her actually. Mm. It's those ears, isn't it? Those really like. <laughs> yeah. And and actually, if you see a picture of the the real one, her face, I'm really pleased with the with the angle mm. on her nose and the expression because she she looks very much like that. Which I'm so I'm delighted about that. Um, these the two up there. If you can see two dogs up there, just to move you back again. Are they schnauzers? Uh, no, they're not actually. They're uh, Welsh terriers. Oh. And, that, and it's interesting how these things come about. You know, I was imagine we'll talk at some point about sort of sales and all that sort of stuff. But when I started, um, I made a I made this one in fact, which is a Welsh terrier, which we did as part of a lesson. We were doing a um a, like a masterclass in making dogs because quite a few people in the lesson were had dogs and they wanted to make their dogs so I thought I would just pick a dog and do it and it, it was a friend of mine's dog um and uh she put it on uh, she did the picture of it and she put it on Facebook onto the Welsh Terrier owners site and I've then got another two orders for Welsh Terriers and it's it's fabulous so if you sort of kind of pick a breed and do it and then it, it just sort of generates a bit more a bit more sales it's yeah mm -hmm. it's great and then I had these emails coming through saying can I make a Welsh Terrier and I thought well I've done, I've done I've done one already, I can make another. And actually these this is that's my fourth and fifth one there. <laughs> fourth and fifth Welsh Terriers. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's the way to do it, isn't it? Because people just love their dogs. Yeah. Yeah, and actually particularly if you've got sort of yeah, a breed like that, then you, they do tend to sort of um yeah, pick up on it. And uh, see I'm just uh, Nanita's gone a bit low, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And shall we have a look at your website? I think Leslie will just bring up your website and you can tell us about a few pieces on there. I know there are a few that you guys were talking about earlier. Those mugs are gorgeous as well. Yeah, now they're new because I, I do um, throw on the wheel, but I don't normally other than when I'm teaching. And so one of the things I thought I'd do, my skills are quite basic and I thought I would, I would just hone my skills while we've got a lockdown because I do teach on the wheel um, and I have just really enjoyed doing it. So I've yeah, and I've, I've, I've used the, I tend not to, to carve and make patterns on them. I don't know if you can see them up here. They're all different. So I can't, I don't like making the whole set of things at the same. So like, you mm. know, I love, I'm really, really pleased with that one, I must say. Um, yeah, so, uh, they're just good fun to do. And so um, what I'm going to do is during lockdown is just make a series of these. Again, they're all going to be boxed up and then I'll sell them as individual mugs rather than sets as gifts. Perfect in time for Christmas. <laughs> exactly. My sentiments entirely. <laughs> so now I'm not doing the lessons. I'm supplementing my income in other ways. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Here's your, here's your website. So if you wanted to talk through a few of the bits we can see here. Oh, there's your pigs. Well, there's my pigs. Well, that, that's my pigs when they were very little. <laughs> in my friend's living room, I hate them. Um, yeah, but I, I have got two pet pigs who, if they were not quite so big, I would have brought them in here today, but they would have probably sort of trashed the trash joint. But they are absolutely adorable rosie and olive and uh, yeah they're very gorgeous pigs um that picture that actually there's a story behind the picture below 
that's me with Kate Malone. And Kate Malone was the was a fantastic ceramic artist and she was the judge on the first and second series of the uh, Pottery Throwdown. Um, and she, before I started teaching, she kind of kicked me off into it, bizarrely, because I had done a dog and um, I put it on Instagram and I don't know how she came across it, but she saw it and she liked it. So I was jumping around the living room thinking, wow, she's liked a, something that I've made and this is just, this was just huge. I was quite happy there. Then, Anyway, so I wrote to her and just said, can, you know, if, can I do your dog? And if you like it, have it and blah, blah. And she, and she came back and said, you know, I just said, you know, I'm a sort of a setting out on, or about thinking about setting out on my own. Anyway, so I made it and uh, we ended up taking it up to her studio and she really loved it. And, um, and she, I was kind of dithering about whether teaching was the, something that was the right thing to do and whether it was going to be, well, doable really. And um, she would just really talk me into it. And she said, oh, we need teachers and you should do. And she, and for a long time, it's less so now, but for a long time, she was, she emailed me, she sort of kept in touch and she offered me bits of advice. She was fantastic. And I didn't even know her. And it's purely because she saw something on, on Facebook, on Instagram. And my favorite thing that she did was when she moved house uh, last year or the year before, I can't remember when. And she put on, she had a picture on Instagram. She, she said, all my stuff's moved now. I've got my two favourite pieces that are left, which are coming with me in the car, because I'm not going to trust them for lorry drivers. And there was this fantastic piece of Clar Clarice Cliff, old piece of art, in a box full of um, the bubble wrap and stuff. And my dog. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> and all so, that from one like on Instagram and then you reaching out. That's just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it, it was just amazing. It was just a lovely story. And uh, I was just delighted. And I was saying, you know, she, she is in touch from time to time. And I think it's, it's lovely. And I, d I didn't know her. And, uh, and she is very famous and very well known as a ceramicist. And uh, she's mm. just been really, really, really sportive. Lovely story. <laughs> oh that's really really nice yeah that's so warming isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly um, i am um, obviously i recognize a few of those pigs <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you might. laughs> i think i might have one downstairs <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> and the cow, you... cow as well yeah cow and the cockerel you did for me for my mum <laughs> they all live together we've got a little like, farmyard <laughs> little shrine to mary <laughs> Oh, that's that lizard. That was amazing. That's quite big. That was probably about eighteen inches, two foot long, and I was asked to make that. And that um, lives in Corfu. And uh, the the couple that that commissioned it and wanted they actually wanted something different. But I talked them into having that because I thought that was a better option. It was actually to cover an outlet on their outlet pipe on their house in Corfu, and. Um, and I made. I was so pleased with it. I was so pleased with the glaze. It was just. I just couldn't have asked for that to go any better. But I. Um, we we said, you know, when it goes up, we to give instructions, and they said, oh, we're not very, not very good at DIY. Do you want to go and do it yourself? And we thought, oh yeah, okay. So we went out to the tour for and put and installed it in their house. <laughs> and it and it's still up there. To few because they're friends of friends, and a few people have been to stay there and have taken a picture of it and sent it back to me. <laughs> That's just beautiful. I wish I'd seen that in real life. Oh, well, you'd go to Corfu. <laughs> well, any excuse. <laughs> so some, some of those lower down, quite old old pieces, actually. Oh, yeah. I used to make a lot of horses. <laughs> Hang on. Said that would happen. As long as it wasn't the monkey. <laughs> yeah, the monkey won't go, trust me. <laughs> I'll put them there. Yeah, no, they're... Um, yeah, the horses. I started off making a lot of horses, but I've kind of moved on to other animals now. But I do make them from time to time. And I did a lot of Raku, whereas I'm actually quite enjoying mm. doing some um, stoneware stuff and and using underglazes and glazes and, and experimenting a bit more. Oh, so, he's lovely, that one. <laughs> that's a really old one. That, I used to love doing those cows. Oh, God, he's so plump, isn't he? <laughs> he's so <laughs> sweet. But it's so different to what I make now. So. Yeah, it does look so different. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, I did love the cows. The cows lend themselves very well to a raku filing. Oh, they're, gosh, they're really old. And what are they? Oh, for tea lights? So you yeah. put, oh, they put the candles inside. Okay. Yeah. Have... And the lights all shine through. And also, if you run lace, I'm, I'm a great lover of textiles. If you run lace through porcelain, mm. and then the light will shine through, and you get all the lace pattern, the lights coming, light coming through all the lace. It's lovely. Oh, lovely. And that's what kind of what I'm saying. So I do make lots of different things. I think I, I kind of focus on my animals, but I think... Yeah, as I said, I just love making things, and actually, it doesn't. 
it doesn't matter what it is. I just love making making things. I love making things well. And I look at some of those things mm -hmm. now and think, oh my word, I wouldn't make that now. But it's, um, yeah. every time I make something, it's better. It's, you know, it's better than the last time. What is your favourite animal to make now? You like doing the cows, you said. What's your favourite yeah, animal to make now? <laughs> but, okay, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> Whichever's the current one. I do love making the dogs, actually, because the dogs are all different. I like animals that you can add a bit of expression to. Everyone always says mm. that my animals have got lots of facial expression and they, you know, they've got lots of character. Yeah. And, you know, there are some animals I think are harder to find that character. And, uh, yeah, it's, I think it, yeah, I think it's not so much the breed, it's the animal. And if, if I find one that I like, and I can see it. I can see it's quite expressive. Then I, that's what I want to do. Um, the, my next one's going to be a, a ring-tailed lemur. So I will. Make, I will make some more because um, I've got a really cute picture. Of her. I've, I will make some more chimpanzees though because this I've really enjoyed doing her. And having done the first one, I can now. I now. I want to do some in different positions and stuff. Mm -hmm. I kind do of. You... Yeah. Oh, but when you do your commissions, especially with dogs and things, do you, do you rather? Um, would you prefer to meet the animal? Um, first of all, or would you rather work from pictures? If they're local, I do. Um, yeah. I haven't. I've, I've met this one, and I've met these two. I haven't met those two. They one's in Northampton, and one's somewhere. I can't remember where they are now. But um, Essex, I think, is one. But yeah, so I can't. I can't go and meet them. So I have to do that off pictures. But I do say to people, you know, you can't send me enough pictures. So I don't want just a sort of a posy picture. Mm -hmm. I want pictures of them running, walking. I want pictures of their tail. I want pictures of their feet. Or you know, pictures of their tummies. You know, you, you need to know where all the markings are. And I want to. Know, I want pictures of how they their favourite positions and you know if a dog sits down quite often they'll sit on one side or another yeah you know it's really important to get that sort of thing right otherwise it doesn't become that dog mm -hmm. and when I make them I don't I don't make them I, you know I don't have a specific thing in my head if I make the dog and then I'll sort of I'll bend the clay round to give them that movement yeah. because it almost moves like a body would move it's um, mm -hmm. and then you can you know tilt the head up or sideways you just you, know, you suddenly get a whole new expression what would be, um, if you thought about this, what would be your absolute dream project? What would you love someone to just say, I need you to do this? Or would you just do off your own back? <laughs> just totally. Yeah, because as soon as it becomes somebody else's project, it's not my dream project. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, it needs to be something from you. Yeah, my dream project is to, actually, my dream project isn't a project, it's a lifestyle. My dream project is to carry on doing what I'm doing forever. That's, oh, uh, that's really nice. Making things and teaching and just, uh, yeah. Doing nothing, doing nothing else, going to the pub, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah, I don't have a dream project. I don't, I, a long time ago, and I've, I've talked to Leslie about this, but I had a, I always thought I wanted to be a famous artist. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because that's kind of how I was going to be able to do it for a living. And it wasn't about wanting to be a famous artist, it's about wanting to do pottery for a living. Mm -hmm. And um, and I said to you, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have that dream anymore because actually I love what I'm doing. As and you know, every time I make something, it's better than the last. I don't have a lot of stock. I've got pretty much what you can see because as I make things, either they're commissions and they go or they sell. So I'm, I'm kind of already doing that dream project. That sounds very, that sounds very twee, but it's true. <laughs> Does, no, it doesn't sound twee at all. It sounds very inspiring. Oh, good. Good. And I think I think the, the inspirational bit, hopefully, is for people to sort of to recognise that you don't have to have done it for a career to get to this position. This is, um, yeah, the, uh, any time if you've got the opportunity and if you've got, you're driven to do it, then uh, give it a go. Did you find, I, I know you're saying you're doing your exotic animals now, so did you find lockdown um, and the whole situation, did you find it a blessing or a curse for you and your and your practice? Um, I, um, I'm always blessed. I'm always I'm I'm a cup half full person. It's uh, nothing, nothing's ever a curse really. Um, I spent the first several months um working, not working in the studio actually, or just I, I can't work just doing bits and pieces. And we were involved in my husband and I were involved in quite a big project developing a um we set up a community interest company um at the tail end of last year and we were doing some building works on a tea shop in the village which we went from estate agents and so we had a builder doing it and luckily he could do it in in lockdown and we were working on his own but we spent a lot of time working on that doing various things the paperwork and doing you know decorating it and all this sort of stuff and um and i found i couldn't i found it very hard to work while i'm in the studio while i was doing that because i can't just sort of pick things up for an hour and put it down i like to have sort of extended periods of time so 
but uh, a month ago that opened. So if anyone wants to go for a cup of tea in Burwash, the Blacksmith's Tea and Coffee Shop is just wonderful. And is that uh, the one that's opposite Altered Images? That's it, yeah. But I saw it. It's buzzing there. They're so it, it just looks so lovely, though. I didn't realize that was you. And that was that was. It's not me. No, I'm just a customer there now. We but we oh. made money, and that was all paid for by community funding, which we we raised oh. all the money for. So, and it's just it's fantastic, and it is buzzing. It's lovely. She cooks the yeah. best cakes ever. Um, but anyway, so so we, we were busy doing that, and so it's only in the last month since that opened that I've um, kind of come back to the studio properly and really got into it and got going, and I'm loving it. So I guess in terms of your question about lockdown, um, it's a blessing because it's given me time to actually spend a bit of time making stuff of my own without being sidetracked by the lessons mm -hmm. and practicing my wheel skills and that's wheel rather than real. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just getting better at what I do. So during your, um, your journey being an artist, um, were there any significant people who really helped you and stand out to you? Um, yes, definitely. Um, the first one, top of the list, well, Kate Malone was there up there, but um, the, the top of the list is someone called Chris Hesketh. And anyone who's a local ceramic artist out there will know she runs Hesketh Potter Supplies. And I met her years ago. She used to have a shop and a gallery in Lewis, and I was working in Lewis. And um, I used to go and buy my stuff from her. And, um, and she was just brilliant because I was just teaching myself. I used to have a little mini lesson every time I went to buy something. So I'd go along there and say, oh, I want to do this. And she'd show me or talk me through how to do it. And, and she was just fantastic. And you just and she's, a, she's such a good friend now as well. And, uh, and I still buy all my stuff from there. And she's, she's, she runs a great shop, great business. And, um, but she was such a, such a good mentor because she'd been there. She used to be a pottery teacher and she, you know, when I started teaching as well, she just helped me set up the studio and gave me loads of advice as well. It's, yeah, definitely she's inspirational in terms of what she was done. And we, you know, we make a lot of stuff together. We used to make a lot of stuff together in terms of doing some raccoon firing and things. Um, but I think my sort of inspiration is come to, is back to the animals actually and the, and the making. And I think there's, you know, I've always loved animals. I've not come from an animal background, but I, I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I learned to ride and there was a woman in Bethel who, she taught me to ride. Her name's Mary, uh, Mary Joy, and she taught me to ride. And she was just brilliant. And she just instilled in me an absolute love in all animals. And uh, and I think that's never gone away, you know. And I've tried making people, and I can't do it. I haven't got any, <laughs> any infinity with, with some with a person at all, but give me an animal to make, and I love it. And I've, I'll, you know, it's a challenge. It's, it's there. And I think, she was, that... I think she was very inspirational for me. I'll send this letter. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't that funny how and your earliest pieces were horses, like yes. you were saying, and it started with horse riding. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But um, yeah, so they're, they're the sort of big influence in terms of the artists. I'm more, I'm, I'm not driven to the big galleries and the famous artists and the fine art and all that sort of stuff. I did, I, I did find we came across a, an artist, um, Fernando Botero who's a who had done sculptures and stuff and makes these enormous great horses like figurative stuff and i did love all his stuff and his paintings as well but i'm more drawn to the sort of the little local galleries where you get the local artists and you know like a lot of the galleries you get around here and I, you know i can i'll go to sort of towns and villages and i just love going and seeing what other people are doing so i'm more drawn to people like me than <laughs> famous artists and uh, yeah, so that's where I, and I get a lot of inspiration from doing stuff like that and lots of ideas. Fantastic. And um, what piece of advice um, would you would you be willing to give that's come from your personal experience? Like you say, your the, the journey you've taken, it hasn't necessarily been, you know, di direct as, as a lot of artists are. What would be your advice? My advice would be don't give up. Deal with your frustrations, because sometimes it is incredibly frustrating when you fire something it doesn't come out like you want it to come out and i'm sure it's the same with all sorts of art you know with your painting drawing it's not how you want it to be but you know i've spent a lot of time making stuff that i've just not kept over the year now now i keep most of the stuff i've made in fairness but or we all sell it but just don't give up just and it's not just about having a a skill that's plucked out of thin air there's a lot of practice that goes into it as well you know and i spent a lot of time in my studio and and uh, it, it's kind of paying off now. And I think the other thing that, that for me just sort of 
comes down to in terms of all of this sort of stuff it all looks fab but present it well as well and I think that's really important I think a lot of artists you know and I've brought stuff and you get it and it's actually just sort of come you know you buy something that's actually quite valuable and it comes wrapped up in the paper bag or something but mm -hmm. a, I've, I've kind of tried to develop a brand now and an image and I've got sort of box stuff and you know, this is an example and I make little little hearts little porcelain hearts to go on the front and it's it's a great way of advertising it's got my website on there my phone number you know and and, and people love this sort of stuff that they really can nice. that, yeah that they can just pick up and hand over as a gift you know I'm not I'm not precious about making lots of things that are going to be worth a fortune um during lockdown, because we were making money, raising money for the CIC, the community interest company, I made all of these little hearts, but just on strings. That one you can't really see on that. Oh, love. Love. Does that say, is that backwards to you? No, no, it's the right way around. Is it, it looks backwards to me. That's really weird. I've got a, <laughs> hug, a hugs one. Oh. And uh, thank you. And I sold them as lockdown pieces so people could send hearts to their friends and family who they couldn't see. And we sent them all off in these little boxes. And they oh, that's were lovely. Popular, and um, and they were only sort of you know ten pound a box, and and yeah, hundred percent of the money that went for those went to the went to the CIC. But you know, just little things like that, I see that as a way of advertising. Mm. You know, people people have got that; they love it. These flowers that I dropped earlier, these all, which I will buy. These I just boxed <laughs> up. I box up in um, boxes of three flowers in a box and put them in there and then sit, put those in the post and I've got, I can put little messages on them and you know they they make just lovely gifts and again oh. it's just back to making things and you know I'm not I'm not precious about being the sort of you know doing the oh thank you Fran <laughs> she's just what a lovely gift thank you <laughs> yeah just um, they're just nice things to offer and uh, and I'm stretching myself all the time I'm stretching myself doing my pottery doing the wheel throwing stuff I've been making these plates that I love to which I've been working on the different. Oh wow! Ones. Yeah, and I just that's that's three plates in there, but they just sort of stack up nicely, and and they all come in boxes and things like that. It's just it's, it's fun. And it's different, and yeah. You know. And there was the lace on those as well, wasn't there? Was that on that top yeah. one? Yeah, that's got lace on it. So so the base on on a bit of clay, you get lovely textures. It feels nice, but you, you know the glazes just sort of pull into the into the lacy bits. And so what happens? I roll the the lace into the clay, and then you pe just peel the lace off, and it leaves the imprint behind. Which is a, yeah, that's I love that colour. Oh god, yeah. Okay. They'd be really nice. Are they called um, charger plates? Who plates? Is that what are they called charger plates? You know what you have under your your main like dinner plate oh, on a good. table setting. I don't know. They, they are now. <laughs> yes. I've, I've also done sort of like do bigger ones and do sort of um, plates like um, serving plates, platters. Mm. I don't want to knock the keep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but and things like that. It's all, and that's quite a challenge doing those because actually to make a plate that comes out flat, to make a plate that you know to get the colours right, to get the colours even. It's all learning, and I think as long as I keep learning, I'll keep making different things. Fantastic. Oh, we've got loads of questions coming through for you. Oh, good. Oh, first one. How do you decide on pieces that should be? Is it raku? Raku. Yeah. Raku. Yes. <laughs> raku is the is the um, Japanese style of firing, which is done on a gas kiln, um, and it gives you the crackle glaze. So, if you excuse me a minute, I'll just go and get an example if one I made. Yeah, please do. Thank you. It's it's not a it's not an animal. I've not got one here, but just as an example, when you raku fire something, you get this crackle glaze, and that's because it goes in the fire, and it comes out. It gives a really interesting effect. You can also do things like this, which is um, this is horsehair raku, where I yeah. <laughs> plucked a pair of horsehair off the tail of a, of a horse and. Uh, Put it onto the onto the hot pot and it's uh, it burns onto it. it smells but burning hair so yeah so i i if i'm going to do something with raku i decide in advance that that's what i'm going to do so it depends what the what the piece of work is because it uses different clay and it fires to a different temperature so i have to decide that in advance mm -hmm. so it really is about just thinking about what the piece is if it's an animal 
that would lend itself as an example. If it was a, a polar bear, as an example, it would look. Yeah, Jane, it is. Horsehair is fantastic. So I'm reading the comments on the side, so I go, I should. Um, if it's a, if it's a polar bear, for example, you've got a sort of a white animal, like the white horse have done, they just look fabulous with that crackle glaze. If it was a, um, something with more colour, like say this dog, if I tried to rack you that, you wouldn't get any of the crackle. And it kind of be a bit of a wasted process, really. It's, it's quite a, um, yeah, it's an intensive process and it's not always successful because you don't know what you're going to get. And you fire something up to about a thousand degrees in about half an hour and then take it out of the, t out of the kiln at top temperature. That's why I haven't got much eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> and you get, but you do get this fantastic crackle and you never know quite what you're going to get. So you can't say that, you know, definitively, this is what I'm going to make for you. I always have to say, well, you know, kind of, it is what it is when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. It is fun. Another question says, you are very active in your local community, obviously, from what you've been telling us about the tea room. Um, do you have an aspiration for community post lockdown? Um, well, we've still got the community interest company, so we'll we'll raise money and do another project. So, yes, absolutely. My back, my office background is local government, so I've kind of sort of um, a bit part of, you know, I'm always been involved in sort of community aspects of work albeit on an employed point of view rather than as a sort of voluntary thing but yes absolutely and we live in a fantastic village which has got a wonderful community and um it's just nice to be able to do something within it it's uh yeah worth doing brilliant um you were involved in the sculpture project of red dead kipling how did that happen how did that come about ah that's fantastic <laughs> that, Atkinson that did that and um yeah, she was, um, well, partly, we've got a real thing in Burwash that we've got the high street is, you know, there was a lot, used to be a lot of shops here and they're gradually closed down, like all village high shops, high streets, it's happening all, all over the place. And uh, my husband was a parish councillor and we were, we were talking at the time and he was talking about how to bring people back into the high street. And we've got a National Trust property here, which is Batemans, which is where my jacket thing lived for many years. And um, there's hundreds of thousands of people that go and visit that every year, but they don't come up to the high street and, you know, buy a bottle of water in our shops or whatever. And um, so we thought we, we, there ought to be something there to encourage people to come to the high street as well. And um, we had this idea of getting a sculpture of Rajar Kipling and, you know, Vicky Atkinson, who's a fantastic um, artist lives in the village and so we we approached her and asked her to make him and it was just amazing because I could watch her watch the process and see that see it happen you know it was just fabulous and it's amazing every time you go past there's always someone sitting on the bench with Rajar Kipling he's very popular and he has brought people to the village without a doubt I'm sure I always stop and see him every time I walk up the um the high street which is very yeah. often yeah. <laughs> but I yeah. always stop because it's just it's just phenomenal isn't it yeah it's interesting because um you know people in, in the spring people give him put daffodils in his lap and all sorts of things you know and in the winter oh. he was wearing a scarf for a while last year you know so. <laughs> and I don't know who does it it's just I think people just sort of see him as part of the village now and think oh he's a bit cold or we'll dress him up a bit <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> like, um, one of the questions was so you spoke about your dream project but do you have a dream client that's a tricky one <laughs> Again, no, back to the back, back to the I'm not I'm not that um, my ambition is around making things and making different things and making them well. I've got I've got no no desire to for that sort of the fame or for sort of you know some some I suppose Kate Malone was. She's I mean she's I, I was gonna say it'd be someone you admire. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm no, I am no i do not have that sort of dream. My dream is to is to keep learning. I don't have a I don't have a dream client. I can't even think who I'd want to make something for. We've got one here from Fran who says, do you teach one-to-one -one classes? I take it this is for next spring, like you say. No, I do groups. Um, up to eight people in a group. I don't do one-to-ones. It's, um, yeah, it does. Uh, my studio lends itself to having groups. And if I've an outside of the groups, when I've got spare time, I like to do my own stuff. And actually, it's mm -hmm. amazing how quickly your time fills up if you do one-to-ones. I do, I do sort of parties and things like like a half day party and things like that. So oh, yeah, fun. Groups, yeah, I had um, I had a few people come along for parties. I had um, who's a uh, Jilly 
that used to do the wine tasting on telly. I know I can't think of her surname, but anyway, she came along for a party for her for her birthday. So uh, that was my hey. name. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's not watching this, and I've forgotten her name. <laughs> we like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leslie's oh, Gordon. 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 <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Can we edit that bit out in case you're watching? <laughs> And the last question I've got here is, what size kiln do you use for your larger works? Uh, I've got no idea how big it is. It's quite big, though. Um, I've got two kilns. I've got a little one and, and then a big one. Um, I would have to, if whoever's asking that, if you could let me know, I can I can tell them when I go and look at the label on the side of it. I've got no idea how, how many litres it is. But it's a, it fits quite a lot of stuff in. And in fact, it's a round top loader and it's a roader. And when I stand next to it, it comes just slightly uh, slightly higher than my waist so it's uh, it's a big kiln and that's standing on the floor it's about a meter across wow <laughs> i know yeah it's not it's not small but when i'm doing lessons i've got a lot of stuff that can uh, that you know has to go in it really. it's uh, yeah lots, lots of people's work it's so oh, lovely to perfect. see you mary thank you how you doing <laughs> Oh look, you need to beautifully placed there. Look now, she is beautifully placed right in the bit in the middle of the screen. <laughs> and um, Amanda, so some of your ex um, uh, students are watching on Facebook, and they're all saying, "Oh, Mary, it's so lovely to see ah. you." Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> and I feel exactly the same way because obviously I came to you. For you to teach me a long time ago when you first started the classes so I could help you with you know getting the classes going and um, and as I've said many times I like to know how these things work practically so that I can present and represent you properly so I well, very much when I started classes. I had eight people a week coming through my studio four years ago and at the start of lockdown I had 52 it's just incredible, Mary, mm. how well you've done. Oh, it's just been brilliant. It's just, it's been a, such a lovely journey. Yeah, so proud of you. Well, thank because you. Because you're just, an, you are such an inspiring teacher. Oh, the way you. you teach, and anyone who's thinking of, um, and I know none of us can go to the lessons right now, which is sad, but next spring, get your name on Mary's list. <laughs> <laughs> that is my big tip because the way Mary teach, teaches is so so gentle you you don't impose your view on people you kind of let them kind of find their way and then you say I could show you a different way to do that <laughs> so subtle so subtle and you're like oh yeah that would be helpful <laughs> especially for someone like me who's absolutely no idea how to do pottery <laughs> and myself and you know there was the other mary and amanda and lots of other people nicola all started coming to you and i think some people have gone on to buy kilns oh absolutely and yeah yeah no truly inspiring teacher and i love the monkey <laughs> i think she might I'm have to looking at the screen like she's looking at me mary she's saying to me leslie i need to come <laughs> to your house <laughs> She's, I'm being very fair gentle with her because she's actually just drying, drying out now. So she hasn't been fired. So she's very in her most fragile state as she's ever been. Yeah, before. so I but really I like to fact, hear a bit about that. It's on the screen going, what's that? Yeah, who are those people, who are those people looking at me? <laughs> I'd like to know a bit more about that, a bit more about the process because we've talked a lot about, you know, your career development. I'd really like to hear a little bit more about the process because I know she's drying now. Yeah. You know, there's so many risks in ceramics. It's such a fragile craft and so many moments where, I mean, personally, I've had my moment where everything died in the kiln, haven't I? Yeah, no, and not... you had to, you had to ring me up and say, Leslie, yeah. I do it like hasn't gone up. well. <laughs> People turning up to lessons and I'll say, oh, no, it, it exploded. <laughs> Things do. Just... I think it doesn't happen that often, if I'm honest. It's, um, but in terms of this, so, so I've made her from wet clay. I, I don't I don't have a mould. I just literally start with a, a little cup of clay and I, I roll out coils and I just build it up and I shape it. And I don't have a specific shape in my head. I knew roughly what position she was going to be in, but I, I, don't, I don't pre-form the shapes. 
I'm, I very much do it as I go, which is some people do that, some people create the legs and all that sort of stuff and have them already preformed and can join them on. But um, so I, I do it as I go and I build up and I add bits of clay on. And it's all about how you join the clay on. That's what's so important. And then when I'm happy, when she's finished or they're finished, then you just leave them to dry. And the trick is to leave them to dry as long as you possibly can because you don't know, particularly because it's a hand built structure, how some bits are thicker than others. Inside there, it could still be quite quite wet and she's she is hollow all pieces like this are hollow um when she's dry and i will leave her probably for another week there although she looks like she's dry but inside she may not be so i'll leave her another week and then she'll go in the kiln and she'll have her first firing and that's called a bisque firing and then when stuff's bisque fired it's like like this bisque fired plate so it's kind of quite dry I don't like it. It feels, feels like oh, it's cool making my nerves go on edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that for this, that will be quite a low, a low firing. So the clay will still be quite porous. But once she's had that firing, and that'll be up to I'll fire her to nine eighty. When she's fired, and it's fine. When I put her in the kiln, I do explain that she's going to be a bit hot, but she'll be fine when she comes oh. out. So she, she's fine. I do. You think I'm kidding? What I do. No. Um, so when. When she's had that firing, and then I can paint her, and I'll put underglazes on, like this dog I was showing you earlier. I've painted that today, actually, with underglazes. And while that looks, again, it's still quite dry and quite not very tactile at the moment. Mm. Once that gets fired, I didn't, I, I, I will put glaze on her eyes and on her nose. I didn't do it for today because it actually makes them look blind. It makes them look like they've got milky eyes. So I thought that would be horrible for being on this. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll glaze her eyes later before she goes in the field. But so... Then they go, once I've done that, then they go back in the kiln. And then they, these ones will be fired to high temperatures. They'll be fired to 1,220 degrees. And, um, and that'll be the final firing. And But it means where I put glaze on the eyes, they'll be shiny. And um, yeah, and the, and the coat will kind of be this sort of satiny coat. Whereas if I was doing it with the Raku, it'd be completely different temperatures for firing. and. Uh, yeah, but these will be stonework. It just makes them stronger. The higher you temp the temperature you fire, the stronger the piece becomes. That's why it gets strong, sort of, you know, the porcelain and stuff. And, yeah, so and could that be left outside? Height. Would that be okay to be left outside then? Yeah. Well, she would, but she's going to be sitting on a bit of wood, which wouldn't be. <laughs> oh, no, no. And she's so you have different glazes. She's, she's, she's sitting on a, on a oh. bit of wood. <laughs> And she'll probably end up on a on a pink or something like that. Because I quite like. Well, she she needs to overhang because her feet are overhanging where she's sitting. She's going to look gorgeous on my cocktail cabinet. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to look perfect <laughs> in my animal menagerie. She's looking at you like, who is she? <laughs> yeah. Please don't. She's saying, please don't let me go to that mad crazy woman. <laughs> let me go to Molly. She's really lovely. <laughs> Don't send me down to that mad woman. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, she has been, I've had a lot of likes for her, actually. She's taken me a bit out of my comfort zone because I've never done a, an eighth before. But she's, uh, I've, I really love doing her and um, she's been, she, she's had a lot of likes. And uh, yeah, I was uh, really pleased with her. Yeah, she, just the expression in her face, I just love it. And for me to say I love something I've made, actually, I mean, it's, yeah. It's quite unusual. <laughs> yeah, she's good. She's really engaging, isn't she? Mm. She's almost got the essence of your pigs in her. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't she? She's got the essence of my pigs. <laughs> yeah, the essence of your pigs, those mighty pigs that were tiny when they first arrived. Well, they lived in the studio for three months. Yeah. They're, um, yeah, they're, they're big. They're, they're, we, we never brought them as micro pigs, so if anyone's asking, they weren't an accident. We knew they were going to grow big. <laughs> Um, and you've got a huge great, big, huge great bit of garden up the back here. I was going to say, you rehoused them just recently, didn't oh, you? Oh, did you see that? Yeah. yeah. And they're not spoiled at all. <laughs> They've got a living room now. <laughs> we can't talk about that because obviously I've got Ted. So yeah, we exactly. can't, we, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, it kind of seems a bit more acceptable spoiling your, your dog, though. People expect that. But when you spoil your pigs, it's uh, people look at you like it's strange. They are the pets. If anyone wants a pig, I would absolutely recommend it. <laughs> I think Amanda's watching and Amanda's quite keen on, on the idea. Oh, is she keen on pigs or is she not keen on pigs? I'm not sure about Bees. that one. 
She's got bees. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'd all really love to come back to lessons. So someone was asking, um, how do they sign up for the lessons for springtime? Um, what I'm basically keeping a mailing list. So what I'll do, I'm going to be writing out to everybody that um, was, in, was in lessons before I closed down at, um, in March. And so they'll get the first opportunity to, for the places and then I'll write out to anybody else. So basically I'll have a, I've got a list of emails of people to contact when I do start up again so they can, uh, yeah. So someone could me. email you. So the, yeah, um, if someone's interested in lessons, they could email you now and yeah. get onto your second list. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, not the first list because they would already have to be doing the lessons. Yeah, but, and I do that term by term. So I, do six, yeah. six, and I always say that sort of whoever's on a term and learning at that time is guaranteed a place on the next term and um, and then I offer the places out to other people. Yeah, yeah. So you've um, you do them like school terms, don't you? Uh, pretty much. I try and keep within the school terms as much as I can, yeah. Mm. So you're going to be doing lots of your own work up to Christmas then? I am. Yeah, really enjoying it. I'm going to, I'm going to do loads of throwing stuff. And I'm gonna, yeah, do loads more of these plates and things. To, oh, these are, I really enjoy doing these. And then in between time, I'm gonna make my animals. And, uh, yeah, just uh, just develop my skills in all areas of the, of the work that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Which is what's the beauty of lockdown, isn't it? It's like mm. you know, it's been. Ver I mean, it's been hard, and it's been very bad on mm. many fronts. But there are some silver linings with these things, and you're an incredible optimist, anyway. And I am optimistic and I have to, you know, and I just have to bite my tongue sometimes because I do recognise that I am incredibly lucky. You know, I've all through this, I've had a studio that I could work in. Financially, I've, you know, I lost my income, but, you know, my husband works and so we haven't had, we haven't got into trouble. So it's just, you know, to be able to spend as much money apart from anything else, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, I do, I do recognise I'm lucky and there's not, not everybody's in that position that I'm in to just say, well, hang on, I'll just make my own stuff. So, yeah. You know. Yes, but not everybody knows. You did have a bit of a rough time a oh, few years back, didn't you? I did. Well, 10 years ago now, actually. Yeah, I had uh, breast cancer. Mm. And I think it gives you a quick up that side, actually. And uh, it uh, just makes you sort of think about what you want to do and how you want to do it. And, but it took me a while to get to the point where I'm doing what I'm doing now. But it was, um, yeah. But it, I got through it. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a, an easy year. I had a mastectomy and six months of chemo and six weeks of radiotherapy and all sort of, you know, all bit crammed in. I actually finished my last radiotherapy session on Christmas Eve, 2010. Wow. So I guess I'll, I'll have a glass of wine on the <laughs> Christmas Eve. <laughs> 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 <About 10 years. laughs> yes, something else that people aren't aware of, but Mary's been put herself on a no potato, no wine or no alcohol diet. No alcohol, yeah. So, yes, yeah, celebration on Christmas Eve of yeah. that. I might yes. start recording, but yeah. <laughs> Amazing fortitude. And also to show that, you know, if you follow your dream, if you follow mm -hmm. your passion, how happy you can be. And it will all kind of like flow out from there because you're doing something that you're so in alignment with, with yourself. Absolutely. You know, it's I don't think I've been as content or as as happy as I am now doing what I'm doing. Mm. And I've had a fantastic life, you know, I've done all sorts of things, travelling and all sorts of things, but it's just now it's just, just perfect. Yeah. yeah, and having had those moments, you know mm. how good this is now. You've got a re yeah. you've got something to kind of like compare it to, haven't you? Yes. The comparison of that wasn't so great, but now I know what great looks like. Yes. And sometimes that means you have to be a little bit selfish, doesn't it? And you just have to kind of like mm -hmm. say, this is what I'm, this is what I want. And I know you alluded to, you know, those conversations we had in the early days of, so what do you want, Mary? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was really interesting because that really made me think about it. And, you know, I, I joined Pure Arts literally a long time ago just to, because I wanted to become an artist. And then we had these conversations. I think, oh, no, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to yeah. do what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think every, but being, it does, that's about being true to myself because I don't want to go off and do loads of art fairs. I don't want to go off and sell my stuff and have to sort of, you know, do the whole, you know, stand by and while people look at me and go, oh, I don't like that one. Or, oh, yeah, that's exactly. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, yeah, that just doesn't appeal to me at all. But selling myself online is a 
good for the ball game and doing this sort of stuff and inspiring other people to do it is completely different. Loving that. Yeah, that's being true to yourself. And that's why I ask those questions. When people come to me and ask for the one-to-ones, I mean, I, I'm like, okay, well, I need to understand what your aspiration is and what kind of artist you want to be. And very often at the beginnings, no one really knows the answer to that question. No. Well, I thought I did know, but actually when I really thought about it and we talked about it, it wasn't what I wanted mm. at all, was it? Mm. You have to vision it. You have to vision. Mm. So if you if you want that, this is what that might look like. What does that f- Now what does that feel like? Yeah. So how does that feel? Oh, I don't like how that feels. Because we kind of detach ourselves from our feelings, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And you think you're doing the right thing. And, uh, but actually, yeah, I, I, I wasn't. And, um, but I am now. Yeah. No, I'm so proud of you. You're doing, you're doing an amazing job. And I know <laughs> COVID kind of like shifted you from this amazing, you know, teaching into doing other things. But, you know, you've really made the best of that. Well, I'm making. St- I could never have made this stuff like this chimp and or Minuta and all that sort of stuff while I was doing the teaching and things. And so, you know, and there's going to be a lot more of this to come. Brilliant. So really enjoy doing this. Yeah. So, no, I'm on a, I'm on a mission now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got another few months to go before before this COVID thing Goodness, goes. Goodness, Mo- uh, Molly, we've unleashed the beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Heaven only unleashed. knows. Actually, but, it's, uh, yeah. but also just working on the wheel you know I've never found time to do that but I've yeah, really enjoyed doing that have you I've tried Molly I've, I've put a coffee in it but I literally got this out the kill this afternoon but oh, it wow. I love nice. those I love like those yeah I'll be we'll be in for ordering some of those so Molly have you ever thought about doing um, ceramics, ceramics yourself I spoke to you about that long ago didn't I Mary <laughs> but um, no I've never done it <laughs> Oh, I don't think I'll be a natural. I, I didn't think I'd be a natural. And Mary was quite worried about me at times because I was incredibly quiet, which anyone who's been watching these interviews will know that that's not a normal state. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had a pound for everyone that comes through the studio and says, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but I want to give it a go, I would be rich. But, you know, everybody creates something and everyone creates, creates something good that they should be proud of because... You know, everyone's got it in them somewhere, and they just need to need to believe that that's the case. And actually, with a bit of guidance, and you know, I do have projects, so we do work through projects and things. And with a bit of guidance, people can absolutely create something that they can be proud to put out there. I'd love to do some mugs and things. I'd yeah. really, really like to do that. Well, I invested in a second wheel just before just before lockdown because I can teach more on the wheels. So I've got two wheels here now, but. It's, Quite amusing. So I'm, I'm very def- decadent. I've got one wheel now in lockdown for, for using this buffer and one for the white coat. I've got two different faces. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit decadent, really, having, having one a wheel for each type of one. <laughs> very tempting. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, the, the, I'm happy to teach on, on at all levels and do all of that sort of stuff. Ah, oh, so the wheel might be for you, Molly. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's something to look forward to in the spring. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so tomorrow, Molly is going to be speaking to Danny. Oh, wonderful. I don't know her at all. <laughs> no, you've got <laughs> no idea who she masks. is. <laughs> I've got one of her masks. I'm going to do that, actually. When she logs on, I'll be like... Which one have you got? I've got a strawberry one, because she gave me a strawberry painting when I came out of hospital um, oh. a few weeks ago. So she came around and it had a matching mask, matching badge, everything with it. It was very, very sweet. So everyone knows Danny's like my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone watching, I've known her since I was a baby. <laughs> so it'd be quite funny interviewing her. I thought it would be really cool for Molly to interview Danny because obviously I, Danny's a very good friend of mine as well and I've interviewed her already and I was like, okay, so Molly, you know, you work for Danny and you work for me. I think you should you should interview um, Danny, especially because Danny, like you were saying, Mary, about the branding. Danny's really embraced the brand, hasn't she? Yeah, oh, oh very much so. COVID has meant Danny has embra- embraced the brand, <laughs> and she's gone fruit and loop. Yeah, fruit and loop, crazy. I love it. Great, great name as well. I thought it was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. I love I, it. I did the um, graphic design for her for the logo. Maybe, so, I think maybe, I maybe she should um, maybe she should dress up as well. I did notice she's doing a lot of dressing up Fridays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was. I think so maybe we should guess that. 
Yeah, yeah. So maybe, Danny, if you're watching, we need you to be dressing up. Molly's going to be wearing a Fruit Loop mask yep. and, and a badge. Yep. <laughs> And, and have my painting like strategic. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, obviously I'm watching with Anita here. She'll still be staring at the screen going. She'll still be going, are we still on? Are we still on there, mummy? What can you day. Yes, you can. <laughs> oh, there's uh, lovely, some lovely comments coming up on the side of my yeah, screen. Yeah, really Thank lovely. Yeah, really lovely. I love the energy in the room. This is, it becomes a real room, this uh, crowd cast, and I love the energy in the room. And it yeah. really adds something to what we're doing. Everyone who watches, thank you so much, because we are loving doing this, and we just want to do more of it. And we're being followed by some amazing people. We're being followed by TEDx, and we're being followed by the um, art the uh, main art gallery in Milan and yeah thank you guys for like hello, showing Milan. us the lo hello Milan <laughs> yeah Paris New York and Milan so <laughs> thank you all for you know taking such an interest in the artists because this is their you know this is their platform during Covid and to hear your stories is is a privilege Mary oh, it really you. is a privilege for us to be able to listen and be the facilitators of you telling your story and Molly and I, we're just getting, we're just loving every day, aren't we? Good. Yeah. Well, it is fabulous, and I've been watching them as well, and just think it's just wonderful. Yeah. Seeing what people are doing and how they're coping. And yeah, and seeing everyone's websites. Thing. Lots of people have been doing like new websites, and they've been like putting up Facebook pages and starting yeah. Instagram. And I'm so proud of you all because no one's kind of going, I can't do this. They're all going, oh, Molly told me to do a Facebook page, so I've done it. <laughs> Luckily, I had one. Gemma, Gemma was going off to do one last night. I think. She was. Gemma was like, Molly told me I need to do a Facebook page, so I'm on that now. And Molly's done this amazing how to sell online guide, which we've sent to all the Art360 artists. Really good, yes. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fabulous. So well done. Well done, everyone. And I can't wait till tomorrow. Excellent. And we'll see you very it's soon. Hello. Yeah, it's going to be very Thank funny. Thank you so much. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Mary. so much, Mary. You've been brilliant. Thank so, see you, everyone, tomorrow. <laughs> see ya. Bye.